actual force of the impact and, and the bite force and things like that. But there's tons of variables along with it, like the size of the person, the direction of the two people that are hitting each other, what actually hits, hits your head, whether it be a, a ball, the size of the ball, the surface area of the ball versus the person, how fast, the weight of all those things. So it's not necessarily going to be like a, a personalized, like you have a concussion as much as it's a, hey, we noticed a very high impact or weird direction, high impact hit and you want to be checked at this point in time. It's kind of like a flag, like, hey, something really bad just happened, we need to check right here, rather than for sure this person has a concussion. Okay. Um, do you have like, um, you, I know you mentioned an app, um, do you have like that development and like those costs accounted for? So it's not an application as much as it's uh, kind of a software that would be along with um, the purchase of a box. It also has a, a, there's a, there's a training aspect to it for the designated health official, which, has, which is usually just the athletic trainer. And so it's not really an app on your phone. That's a possibility if we move to a consumer model, but at, at, the, at the startup stage, it's just gonna be, it's kind of a server model where at all the mouth guards on a box, which you can also add more mouth guards to a server for a whole team will be monitored by the health official, like the athletic trainer during the game so that they can see all the players on the field and what's happening in real time as they're playing. Yeah, so it's like, do you have like all those finances accounted for No, them? we do not. We're gonna, but the way we're gonna go about going, going for those is looking at grants and competing technology that uses very similar um, styles and see what the research and development for those work. So let me intervene for one second. What if I told you that you're being too, you're, you're being too generous and you're allowing him to be too generous by by uh, by not being generous enough, right? So like, let's. I would love to see like what, what would you suggest they. This is a concern for you, obviously. You're like, hey, you, I don't know if you guys have accounted for this cost. What would you if I pulled you off your team and put you on their team? What would you say, guys? We have to do this right now. What, what would your suggestion be? It doesn't have to be a great suggestion. It's just an idea, right? Yeah, I mean, I would just look into like like uh, software development costs, things like that, like what like the employees that would be needed for things like that, thinking about um, like like the time that would go into that, just things along those ends. That's what, probably what I would be looking into. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So a couple things you guys can do would be look at, like find a tech person, right? Go to the engineering building, find somebody and say, hey, I wanna break this down for you. Like, tell us everything that you can think of about this, right? Think about cost, if you were gonna make this and your boss said, give me a cost estimate on these things, what would you tell them? Like, get some, that'd be a great way to get some background on that stuff. Another great thing would be to go, if you find every, every industry that's out there has an industry group, right? So if you think about who are the Got Milk, who made the Got Milk commercials? Anybody know? You know the Got Milk, like, if you ever thought, like, why is, who is randomly and just very generally saying milk is awesome? <laughs> they're not saying buy my milk, they're just saying milk, right? Like, like <laughs> who is doing that? Anybody know? <coughs> you know? It's actually like the California Dairy Producers Association, and they can suck it because I'm from Wisconsin, that's where all the milk should come from. So the <laughs> cows can suck it. But it's an industry group, right? That group exists to help dairy producers in California, right? So they do things like advertise for them. They do things like collect data and do studies, right? Where you're like, an industry study showed that blah, 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 blah. Who did that? It's one of those groups, right? Why did they do it? Because it helps companies. So you guys can get online. All you gotta do is Google, you might have to get creative with what the right keywords are, but it might be like sports equipment or sports safety or athletic training, blah, blah, whatever that, fill in the blank, industry group. And you'll get like one or 50 industry groups for that industry, right? And what you can find there is other kind of competitors, all that kind of stuff, but you can also find all of them will do like, we do a webinar series or we do an annual conference or we do a whatever. You look at the, uh, the program for those conference things and there'll be a bunch of people that are like, the kind of people that would like fly to Topeka, Kansas, and you know do a 45-minute presentation on technology costs for connected athletic safety equipment, you know, in a ballroom in a Best Western, right? Like those kind of people. 
And on the website is their name, their face, their email. Guess what? If you email that person, they've just raised their hand and said, hey, entire universe, I can't wait to talk to you about the costs of Bluetooth chips, Bluetooth chips in sports equipment. That's my jam. Let's talk, right? And I'm an expert. Please call me. I'm so lonely, right? And if you guys reach out to that person, they're for sure going to talk to you. And you can just leverage them. And just be like, yeah. They'll be like, oh, yeah, you have to consider this, 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 and this is how I do it. You're just like stealing all that from them. So it's a great shortcut for like anybody. Check out your industry group or your customer's industry group. If you're selling to, like, there's for sure going to be a group of like, you know, collegiate athletic trainers of America or whatever. Like, cool, find out who those people are. That's a great way to connect to. But really good suggestion, right? Like, dig, in, dig into those costs a little more because. Uh, that can make a big difference. That's thing that came up for me. I wrote three million in the startup costs, exclamation point, question mark, question mark. That seems like a lot. Uh, it's mostly due to uh, a pre manufactured building that I found. And this, this R&D number is really bogus. That needs to get, um, that needs to get revised. But the property yeah. in pre manufactured buildings are pretty accurate. So Quote accurate. here's a question for anybody who wants to answer, right? Uh, especially there are generous folks on this side, right? What, uh, what if they wanted to crank this number down a lot? Anybody feel like it's gonna be hard for them to start this business in terms of like selling, that kind of thing? It would be tough, right? Yeah, look at everybody's business. What if you didn't have to juggle uh, renovating a building and doing all that stuff at the same time? You could do this, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying like you have an option here. If they wanted to crank this lever down, they're turning their investment knob down to zero, basically, right? Or way down from three million. What's the other option? I mean, how could they do that if they want to? I'm not doubting these numbers. I'm just saying you could make a strategic choice to do it a different way. What do you think, guys? Maybe. Could they move this down? Yeah. Uh, maybe you could outsource your manufacturing so you don't have to handle it. From that's totally an option. So what would happen if they do that? What changes in their business model? This money, you know, this cost doesn't go away completely. It's not like, well, why don't you just do this for free instead of for money, right? We would either sell our patent or our license to somebody. Well, you wouldn't have to sell your patent. I don't know if you have a patent. I don't know. Okay, if you don't have a patent yet, it doesn't matter. But um, no, it's your cost of goods sold, yeah. right? Your cost of goods sold go way, way, way up. Because you'd be like, guess what? Like, somebody else is doing this whole process of producing each of these mouth guards for us, but right? Wait, 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 but this yeah. goes away. So, is that the right decision? I don't know, right? But that's something you guys could consider if you're like, because you're going to be like, hey, one thing I could see a judge asking would be, like, <coughs> who's going to give you three million bucks? Because right now you have, you don't have that patent, you have no customers, you have no sales. Who's interested in giving you three million? Now we have no R and and you have the big thing. Good, thank you. That's very true. <laughs> thank you. Don't tell them that, right? But yeah, um, cool. Like, well, what if, maybe nobody. So what if we didn't need that three million bucks, right? Sure, our margins would be way worse, but you have, by my figure, you're like a 51% margin, <coughs> right? So if it meant, if it meant starting or not starting, right? You could get 51% margin and not get this three million bucks, never get started. Right? Just nothing ever happens. Or you could get a much lower margin <coughs> to start out, right? And say, cool, that will help us actually launch maybe our first, you know, batch of 10,000 units or whatever. We just outsource, like, we just literally find somebody who just will, will send us the pre shrink wrapped box with everything in it ready to go, right? You'll still have to do setup costs and everything with that, but this would go way down from. Three million to much, much less, right? It's just a thing you could do, and I'd say, cool. Later, when it makes sense for us to do so, then we'll we'll manufacture ourselves. Just a thought. Any other thoughts you guys have for these guys? If you don't, I'll just talk at them. You don't want to hear that. <coughs> yeah. um, I have a question about your target <coughs> uh, customer base. So you said you're going to target high schools and that uh, the high schools would probably buy about two boxes. That'd be about ten thousand dollars. Do you know have an estimate of how many high schools in the United States can realistically afford that? Um, 
So as far as estimates of high schools, no, we don't have a number for that, but to qualitatively answer your question, like our, our, our earliest adopter was, was very privatized, uh, select style high schools, people that usually have a lot of um, admission costs or tuition costs for their high school students. Um, the first two that come to mind are Moeller, which is local Cincinnati, and I, IGM, IG, I, IGM, IGM in Texas or Florida. Schools like that as our first early adopters because they really already go above and beyond to provide the top-notch equipment for their, um, for their participants. So we we're thinking that at, at least at first we're going to have to go for them. And whether or not it's high school or, or um, college doesn't really matter. It's just we feel like our, our impact is gonna be best in, in either of those two areas. So are any of you guys high school athletes? Yeah, all three of you, right? Okay, cool. So uh, one thing that would be really helpful, like I have the same kind of question. Like, I don't know what the high school athletic director's budget looks like. And I don't mean like their total amounts here, but what you're getting at here, so like some schools have a very big budget for this. Okay, cool, but if you looked into the details of their budget, like where where is that money getting divided up? Right, and so uh, that'd be really helpful for you to know if you were like, hey, schools like this are paying something like $30,000 a year for safety type stuff. And this would fall under that matter. Then we would probably feel like that people are still paying for the safety fees, maybe one that they're really not, that they ought to be paying a lot more attention to and they're not, right? And now I understand kind of what their budget looks like. The other thing you can find out by talking to them, what I'm suggesting is call your high school coaches, right? I'm sure they'd be love, they would love to hear from you, right? And say, hey, help, help me figure this out. Like, I want to understand, get in your mind, right? What does this look like for you? And it's okay if they're not at those schools you're targeting. They can still tell you a lot about like how that budgeting process works. <laughs> and also tell you about how, do, how does this buying decision get made, right? How do you guys, find products like this and decide whether or not you're going to buy them, right? They don't just, like, it doesn't just come to you in a dream, right? Like, you, you somehow seek out this information and you make a decision. How does that work at a high school? Um, you know, if you know a lot about that, then that can help you see, like, oh, okay, is it realistic that they'll buy two boxes of these? I don't know. Like, then you, have to, then you say, yeah because this is kind of how they think about it, right? Any other thoughts? Um, have you looked into maybe like lifetime warranties or like free repairs? Because I know your cost is a lot higher. Um, no, and the reason for that being is we need to figure out the, the actual lifetime of mouth guards. So for traditional mouth guards, but at least on my personal account, I've, repl I've had my mouth guard replaced every year or two years. So we have to figure out, you know, what what is, what is the ideal um, material to actually form the mouth guards out of, and then what does the lifetime actually look like on that? Because that's also a huge part of our business model is what's the, what's the retention rate on purchases that teams have to do? Because not only are there different players, but does the same player have to buy more than one mouth guard? And that's a really, really, really big um, question mark in our business model. Yeah, another shortcut where you, if you talk to, you call your coaches, right? They'll have those answers. Yeah, we usually replace that stuff every year. But we plan on you know, some things we plan on replacing at this kind of rate, and other things we plan on replacing every two years or whatever, right? So they can tell you, you, know, you, you don't have to guess. Right? Any other thoughts? Good work. Good work. You guys were greedy at the end. You guys were generous at the end. I love it. Uh, the one thing